scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We're going to read verse 10 together. One to read. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. One more time. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. There are certain doctrines, please listen, just a little theological background. There are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer. When you get born again, you don't just grow haphazardly, you don't grow carelessly. It matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with Christ. This will guide your growth, the efficiency of your growth or otherwise. Are we together? Not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time. It is important that the informations that are supplied believers, especially as they grow, are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful. It's like building. I always give this analogy. After you lay a foundation, the next thing is not a zinc. Is that true? If you put a zinc, you're going to destroy the building. You can't say you have a house. A zinc is part of the requirement, but there will be a time for zinc. So theologically speaking, there are, excuse me, certain foundational truths. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities. It is my considered opinion and this is also theologically agreed that when believers come into Christ the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of Jesus. That is the very next foundational understanding. There's no point teaching them about money. There's no point teaching them about service in the ministry. If they stumble across a service where that is being taught then that's all right. But where you are training and building people, there is a system. So they must understand the, the realities of redemption. Number two, they must be open to the ministry of prayer. Any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer. That is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated. If you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer, that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded. Are we together? Number three, they must be open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, technically speaking, everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But I mean, they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the Holy Spirit they must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear God to understand the word to interpret scripture 
that's the fourth thing they must be exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn I'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of Christ Paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of God I'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of God celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to Christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchmani would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid 
like the buildings in Dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you. This one, Reverend. This one started his church yesterday. This one, this, and you you are not even even an escrow in the department. And you say, Is it that Lord? You are not seeing me? Huh? Do, do, are, are you trying to say I'm not making progress? Whoever told you appointment is proof of progress. If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices, then it's a disaster. So you see people fight like politics. Oh, there is a vacancy. That vacancy is a deacon. And you see everybody coming to greet the pastor. Pastor, good afternoon. I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back. I've got you covered. That's a manifesto. That's, that's, that's political party. When Jesus was going to select people that he would train, the Bible says he spent the whole night. Jesus, the fountain of wisdom, knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing. You judge by the eye and see Eliab and say, surely this is God's anointed and God said, uh-uh, that's not how I choose. Oh. Look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose. You fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. Jumping and saying, look, just restructure our mindset and that's all. We have reduced the journey. And God looked at a tax collector, wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what i'm looking for saul is on his way to damascus and god is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way god sees ba let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church 
there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me I've not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last yeah i know that example it came from uh, that that uh, book I, I know this man i know the book he's reading yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam but the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen never promote people emotionally give them a chance to have a track record with god give them a chance to have a track record with god don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels and do not flatter yourself into thinking i think i am fit for a level let god himself accredit you it says paul a man approved approved there are illegal people the same way there are jam centers there are authorized jam centers correct there are authorized hospitals there are authorized drugs and every authorized drug has a registration number we call it navdac registration number correct whether the drugs are big or small now there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs put the drugs and put camels on them do all kinds of things it does not make it legal the fact that it was successfully smuggled those drugs in themselves may not kill but they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called navdak that's how it is spiritually you can get up and move and yet you have not been approved let me tell you when people are approved on earth they are assigned thrones in heaven a throne is a symbol of authority those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces that's why somebody can come no rema no revelation but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words they can speak they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it brothers and sisters i want you to preach to yourself i receive grace to stay until he accredits me i receive grace to stay can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i believe that is the spirit of god that just led me to communicate that i receive grace to stay pray oh the head of department prayer is not seeing me are the leaders not seeing me is this pastor femi not seeing me worship team are they not seeing me to give me songs no never lift yourself stay for when the season of appearing comes let me tell you no mortal man can stop you pray i receive grace pray pray Pray, pray, pray. Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works i receive the grace to stay i receive the grace to learn i receive the grace to be built it may take time but i stay i receive grace i receive grace hallelujah hallelujah I will get to our, our teaching proper but i'm just stressing this oh god is calling you to be a kingdom financier and all of a sudden you are killing yourself trying to wear every clothes trying to buy every watch don't die for nothing 
God is calling you to be a prophet and all of a sudden you are forcing yourself to see you are not seeing anything this thing is not trial and error keep working with God one day it will be like a joke you will wake up one morning into a portal a vista just opens up and say so this is what happens until then you force yourself you will see something and what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained i watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility i watch people and i see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit i see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by god as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control see a lot of childishness that goes on in the body of christ i'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is god god left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things i will teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit down and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy or oh, run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in Nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions God told me I saw it so 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 our vision I saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations <sighs> if you do not understand what I'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the Lord 
I want to save you years of pain. Are you ready to pray now? Open my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Pray. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. hallelujah listen to me there were two brothers in the bible born of the same father we understand called cain and abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly i have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions i have not entered as a person I don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment i need to step into because benihin will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things i now do and i get responses from heaven that i did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way it cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible said they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist it's from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until i step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry lift your voice and pray lord i will pray i will wait i am proud of where i am my contemporaries may go ahead of me but i'm not in a rush i'm not in a rush there is a making there is a making. Lakata praka sodo bakariana malata. Being tried as gold. Being tried as gold. The gold of offering. The finest of them. Lekata praska da malada kasha da praska da malada I receive grace, grace, grace. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey. A little bit, a little bit Soon your day will come Start working you, changing everything Will you swallow your pride Tonight, come to the school of the spirit Don't you know In 
his hands are the keys to eternal life. So little yeah, a little yeah, soon your day will dawn inside working. Stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was walking now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows. I said, that's right. That's right. It is dangerous to have a measure of results. The enemy of success is the last one, not failure, because it can keep you. I can prophesy too. It's a little, but at least I'm there. I can minister too. I lay hands out of 10 people, at least somebody must be healed. And you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says herein is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just call you daddy or call you mommy or call you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and saying leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubit is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes the, 
there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that God can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here, a little there. Soon your day will dawn. Start working, changing everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards. Many of you never know. I've not announced one to you. Several awards. You will never see one on my table. I don't trust those things. I thank God for them but I don't believe them <clears throat> you see if you if 10 of you write a test huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say I'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to God's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen. We are talking of ancient portals opened up, hosting God like gods on the earth. We are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously. Not all this jamboree and talking and jacking. We are talking of putting nations under the feet of Jesus. Stopping the sun to rise over nations until Jesus becomes Lord. Joshua did it. When you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles. But there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Pray, pray. You are a prophet, but there are deeper levels. Come on now. There are levels of the prophetic where you create realities. You are an apostle, no doubt, but there are levels of the apostolic where you are given the keys of David that can shut doors and no one will open. Don't be tired. This is where we are made. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy.
Let me tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon. Do you know North Korea has weapons? We've not seen the potentials yet. They have been building it. Nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials. No, we've seen the bombs. We've seen the ballistic missiles. America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen. He said, thou art my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle art listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of God prophetically you have all of God but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but I'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are I know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say I'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door I found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, hold, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a harpalist forget about power 
30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you to please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything i assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what god is doing to you and you will say my god what is this please be seated in jesus name if i had my way we would just pray till the service is finished because when the water is the bible says you strike while the iron is hot as it's hot like this you strike it let everything that is not god fly out of that 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 making Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not kind you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself 
nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on a paper that's how it goes that's what God is saying you see God lifting all these our people now worship team gradually gradually when, when they all come to me I tell them go and sit down because I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit you can feel sharp because you cut wood but what you are going to be cutting are metals not woods metals metals there are machines that ride through metals there are machines that cut stones do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those, brah, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods, they will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. But when you buy it, you buy something, it will cut through rocks and pieces them. That's what God is saying to you. By the time you stand, in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age i think i should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finished success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it i, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble over. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far God will help us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part 1 in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of God's creation and when God I think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh? this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery i've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you woe to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already ah, there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had 
you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always God's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you are already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah I feel like praying no oh, this thing is on me I feel like praying I wish I were alone I feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is dead don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep pray but don't waste it there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it it's like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that there were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species Adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not God's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of God but never in his image the image of God was what Lucifer wanted Lucifer was already in the likeness of God the likeness of God means God has two hands the Bible doesn't tell us he has um, the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now God has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but I'm saying God as a person when Jesus came the Bible called him the full expression of the image of the Christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of God but man was in the image the image of God is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes God God is where you get the root word Kabod, glory the essence of God was vested in his image image 
so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of God but the image of God and then God told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is God's original idea a great mentor Dr. Miles Munro will tell you that's God's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see God making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man I don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do it dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls God's original idea was not to have healing services. All of those things were predicated upon something that happened. We call it the fall of man. Man's use of his will to defy God's will in rebellion led to other provisions. So everything from Genesis chapter 4, the law and, and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still God's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however God's original idea for you was not heaven. 
God's original idea for you was earth. It is still earth. It will always be earth. His plans can change, but his purposes are eternal. Are we learning something? So imagine for instance, um, can I use you? Come. My goal for this gentleman, everybody watch this. My goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water. You see that water? That's what I want to carry. So at the beginning of the journey, I have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of God. He reveals the end from the beginning. Then you start leaving that script. Now, this guy starting his journey, something happens. Are we together? Let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is. Now, I temporarily suspend I suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him. Are we together? That is everything that came from the law until Jesus. It was a fearing off of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position. Now, when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in Christ. Listen. So when you now come back to that position, you are supposed to continue that agenda. But when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things, the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction. Are we together? The Bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. Thank you. So there are many people doing several things. Just, just calm down with this for a moment. I want everybody to hear me. Everybody say marriage. marriage. Shout it. Marriage. Say employment. employment. Shout it. Employment. Say promotion. promotion. Say houses. houses. Say cars. 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 Say long life. Long life. Divine health. Divine Bungalow. 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 Just say everything I say. Duplex. Duplex. Jeep. Prosperity. Prosperity. Hold on. All those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda. In themselves, they are useless as far as God's eternal counsel is concerned. Their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this. Are we together? So marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this. Car, jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing. Let me tell you, one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i said god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it 
there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a matured believer are we together if I ask you what are your concerns now many of us will lift our hands and say money money sir direct money just money naira like that pounds dollars money another person will say child child this is my womb must carry a child you ask the person why are you so desperate for a child you know what the person is going to say largely all the people who married uh, uh what you, around my my time have children some have two some have five some have ten i'm alone and that's the reason why the person wants a child are we together ask someone why are you going to school say are you joking you want me to be hungry abby okay if you are full what is it for say, well i'm for everybody's like that i need to get a good job then another person says i'm not getting a good job i'm a businessman because he went to one seminar both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned if you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chip you've heard me preach this again and again the dominion mandate remains god's desire and anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of god both the hand and the heart of god supplies don't just follow your needs they follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity long life healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom he didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is god's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people please give us genesis 126 again god meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over let's look at it please 126 let's hurry up genesis 1 26 and god said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion read on now over what the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth notice that man was not mentioned the dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men when you do that it's called witchcraft it's called manipulation it's an attitude of the antichrist every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically at a point in time the people were angry you know why there's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated they were designed to be led they were not designed to be ruled when in bible days when god wanted to punish either his people or your enemies he gave you authority to treat them like animals so he would cause them to become slaves he would cause them to become servants he would cause them to serve you not like a man serving somebody he loves subject them to slavery slavery had always been a way of god communicating his dissatisfaction either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies listen the moment you find out an appetite to rule over men i don't mean lead men rule over men is the spirit of the antichrist there is a programming that has come from babylon that is at work in your life unfortunately this system that we live in has designed people to live that way right from primary school 
they clap for you and give you an award for taking first. Now, the idea is not whether you did well or not. The idea is that you beat other people. So they clap for you in their presence. Now their humiliation becomes your trophy. Are we together? As you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person. You see footballers, when they win, Arsenal, Man U, the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying. And that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people. It's an antichrist system. Now, of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools. Use it. The Lord help you. But um, we're examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So you manipulate ways. They even name generators, I pass my... You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's... Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No. I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men, it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone. Are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest, not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. And then he said, the, the Pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership. He said, but it should not be among you. Whoever wants to be great must be your minister, your servant. That the way up is to serve people, not truncate them. This is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of God in the name of spiritual authority, I believe in authority, have pocketed the destinies of other people. Some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast. Where a man of God takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket. He may be well-meaning, but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding. And they make it look like you leave me, you die. If I ask for money, you don't ask questions. If I come to your house and say rice, you say yes sir. Beans, yes sir. Everything, yes sir. And they use scripture and threaten people. It is antichrist. The moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will, you are subscribing to another system. It is not of God. What of workers in the house of God? You, you must be a worker. What of partners? You, promise. This is your suit. You are going to start sewing 50,000. And the guy says, how about, I'm, I'm your boss in office. I know how much I'm paying you, 50,000. That thing looks nice. It is not God's way. Hello? I know you don't like what I'm saying. We're teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their, their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses. People like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things. It was smart, you're a sociologist, answer it, but oh, that is junk. I'm sure wherever he is now, he has known the truth. Listen, let me tell you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today. He's worth your trust. Are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. Hmm. 
The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of takeover must be well defined because for many people, takeover means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. No. It has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John, uh, Matthew chapter 6, we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. And then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm. And he says, give us Matthew chapter Yes, it says, after this manner, therefore pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Your agenda, that domain you have carved out for us. We want your influence. The word kingdom is a combination of two words. A king's domain, dominion, the fair where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men. Ministry, prosperity are only tools to help us. Say prosperity is only a tool. Divine health is only a tool. So you see, when you have these things, the dominion mandate consumes you. They will never steal away God from your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He thought life was only about making money. When he now made money and built bands, he secured himself. Hear what he told himself. My soul find rest. In other words, I have come to the end of my pursuit. Nothing else to be done. And God says, no. This is a rich fool. Tonight, because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned. Tonight, this night, your soul is required of you. What is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate? The next teachings, I'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate. But what is the key? The key is in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Another scripture that has not been properly understood by many. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Let's see where God will help us tonight. It says, for if by one man's offense, that one man now... Um, death reigned by one, Adam, the first Adam, right? Adam, the husband of Eve. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, listen, they that receive two things, what's number one? Abundance of, take note of that, number two, and of the gift of righteousness. These are the two requirements. To be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively. Number one, the gift of righteousness. The Bible did not put them in the order they should come. It just gave you information. The first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively. That mandate of exercising God's sovereign control on earth. Is the ability to be a possessor of what the Bible calls the gift of righteousness. Then number two, abundance, abundance of grace. The Bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities 
can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion you'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together i believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this whole earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he is going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed that means there are many things we are going to find out let me give you a few information <laughs> should i say this hmm. some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth they had their dispensation are we together and the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture a similitude of that event happened to them they now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see 
when this spirit came you you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allowed them to have children with them that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorized our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer do you know why many people get born again and stop there have you seen people that when you tell them oh i'm praying i'm on a program i'm on a this and that they look at you and say what that's a waste because they do not understand this so for them the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell and then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes the day you hear that trumpet do anything you want you are safe you see the theology that's a torturous and frustrating theology jesus said occupy till i come the word occupy does not mean build houses advance with those influence until i come there's something we are missing that's why our young ones are not interested in god again because our marketing of what we give them as christianity is ugly and unattractive so you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child and then you tell the child be born again then the child is born again and say okay daddy what next he say, are you asking me let's go to church and he says daddy i'm going to church every sunday now you say i should add wednesday say oh yeah join baptismal class i see that you are too idle then the guy joins a baptismal class then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination then the day for water baptism comes they baptize him give him a, an english name and hand over a certificate and then the child says okay what do i do again say just continue coming to church and he said no 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 let me, what is all this I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under, there was no logic to it someone comes from being a muslim and then becomes a child of god maybe a christian and all of that and you sit the person down and the person now says okay i have escaped this i'm a child of god say so what do i do now become a worker in church then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says honestly i don't know what what is going on here what is the meaning of this where are we going just say, don't worry oh this thing there's a reward and the person is saying i don't understand then others have said no god could not keep us like this let's add flavor to it then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter and say let's just enjoy ourselves and they say we are occupying you are not occupying that's laziness and idleness are we together so we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of god to become like a museum or an amusement park no both are wrong let me tell you when you know the dominion mandate you will be so busy you will not even you will think age is not on your side you see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency they, they are the issue of heaven is settled see let me tell you 
um, we are going, I hope that one of this series will look at redemption. And I'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not, is not supposed to be a frightful thing. Are we together? The issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university. When you have an admission letter, it is possible to lose the admission letter. But you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter. No. You have lectures. Is that true? You are looking at something else. Imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving. Where's my admission letter? And he opens the box and sees it and keeps it. And says, ah, thank you, Jesus. That's what we do with this rapture heaven thing. I'm not against it. You know me. I love people. I love souls. But having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective. That's why we don't treasure creativity. That's why we don't treasure dominion why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your rewards we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back uh, okay let me not let's let's not talk about this thing i don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ? Why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you, let me i'm sharing with you the dominion mandate the coming of christ will not take believers unaware did you hear what i said the coming of christ i repeat will not take believers unaware please give me first thessalonians chapter five we are reading one to four first thessalonians chapter five is god helping us we're going to find someone and pray tonight first thessalonians chapter five but of the times, please look up. Whether you are inside, outside, I want us to read it together. Okay, I'll read it. I'll tell you where to join. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking to who? Brethren, the church. Is that true? Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Many theologians, well-meaning, stop here. And they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it. The Bible did not stop here. It was Paul himself who had his revelation, uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation. Are we together? Verse 3. For when they shall say, those who are without, when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they 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 shall not escape if you're a child of god read the next verse with all your heart one two give us verse four please quickly one two 
read one more time so if that day overtakes you what is the sign that you are in darkness is that true the bible says we are the light of the world is that true it says but ye brethren i'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and i am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of noah that day look at it it's in your bible i didn't write this that day will not overtake you as a thief why because the spirit of god is in us there is a salt covenant we are joined he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together you can never serve god when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell growing up there used to be a word that the old folks used to use assurance of not salvation assurance of salvation assurance of admission letter assurance of job that's why every time they give you a job they give you a little paper it's a token to prove to you that you are there the bible says god gave us his spirit as a proof as a seal of our redemption as a proof that we are now the begotten of him that he's no longer the firstborn um the only begotten he's now the first begotten of we the brethren are we together now so that god is not ashamed he's not ashamed to call us brethren but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry abba father it doesn't mean people don't backslide it doesn't mean people don't derail but i want you to know this there is a way we have been teaching i'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate 80 percent of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture and i'm not against books i know that there are books that have been written there are encounters am i boring you this is a foundation because several of us are living in fear you don't even know what to believe you are afraid you are sitting you are standing and you are wondering and they tell you if god comes and just when you are you know maybe shouting at somebody that's the end of it if he comes to meet you shouting you see that and so we walk in all kinds of fear even when we go before god there is no confidence in approaching him i believe in repentance you know me i always balance things it's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it there are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth when you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word it will still lead to error i believe in repentance the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the spirit of god because no man can say jesus is lord except by the spirit to say jesus is lord does not mean j-e-s-u-s-i-s-l-o-r-d no that's not it the lordship of jesus is declared by revelation our announcing it is simply a product of it's not the reason no that's why the bible says in acts chapter 10 while they yet, peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on them There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. 
the average christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for god even what we when we talk about purpose most people think purpose is just for graduates you are a graduate your purpose is whatever you studied do something with it get married train your children and give some money to the church and god will help you that is a fruitless life it truly is a fruitless life the dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire fear of heaven fear of rapture and there are books that keep coming every time you go online and just google it some of you oh i had a dream in that dream i saw rapture it may not be a lie the impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the holy spirit does not balance you you can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if god does not give you balance you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody brother be prepared i'm late for work i'm telling you that jesus is coming and you know and all and you make people feel guilty and pastors sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us i want to come and teach a series i had a seven days revelation about rapture i need to come and teach people and they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether god is really love there are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen satan found out that this is a very useful tool so those who started having these experiences satan can appear as an angel of light are we learning he now began to open people through experiences it is true that they left it it is true that they were somewhere it is true that they saw tears similitudes and they returned back to destroy people let me tell you something this issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know for many people this is our theology let's just keep watching the day the trumpet sounds if i make it glory to be to, be to jesus no so we preoccupy our minds and never do anything are we together we never do anything it has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children he gave birth to the five children, witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I'm going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters, if we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north northern christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant you know why because the christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical are we together and which was correct but i'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives their families it's in the north you can see one man with 
five, six children staying in a small room and he tells you, look, what is the use of building a house? I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When the another motto, when the buy the motto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing. And they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The man with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two, unprofitable servant. And those who spend their time multiplying it, listen to what he told them. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. One of the synoptics says, I appoint to you kingdoms. That's the reward. Are we together? Jesus is coming soon. Should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about advancing the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right 
God's nature, his rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why he calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits. Gifts, fruits. The gift of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit is God's benevolence to you. The fruit of the Spirit is a product of your own alignment. It is your own participation in the equation. There is the gift of righteousness. There is the fruit of righteousness. The outworkings of righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. The first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness. It is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Listen, you cannot have the Holy Spirit without the gift of righteousness. It's impossible. There are progressions. The first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regen please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted. Is the nature that is called sin. Sin is not just something you do. Sin is a nature that comes to every man. He say, in sin did my mother conceive me. The true concept of sin is not the things that are done. The true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you. That compels you to be a slave to it. And then execute a lot of things. So the first thing that must happen to any man is birth. The second is rebirth. 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 What is rebirth? An impartation of the nature and the image of Christ in that man. Hallelujah. These are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate. The Bible says this. Let me tell you what the Bible says. We're rounding up. Give, give me, please give me First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. I think 22, 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, 22, 23. Um, I'm looking for one. I'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses. First Peter. Being born again. Being born again. Everybody listen. This born again thing is a big deal. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed. But of incorruptible. By the word of God which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it it's not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event. Listen, that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience. It is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate. The Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man, that mediator of the new covenant, Jesus himself, the foundation of our work in the kingdom the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with jesus the pattern man the portrait jesus himself the bible says looking up to him he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer Whenever we talk kingdom, whenever we talk of anything, the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is Jesus. You begin to trace your compass from him. Whenever you draw any bearing outside of the Christ, that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error. Christ is the standard. We start with him 
and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regene because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's why the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured 
through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why God gave apostles this is why God gave prophets. Listen, this is why God gave evangelists. Are you seeing where we now come into the equation? We were never there from beginning. The apostolic ministry, the prophetic ministry as we know it now, is not an eternal ministry. They are not eternal. No. Jesus is not in heaven today, just as our apostle. No. When he sat upon that throne, we still call him the apostle of our faith. But his ministry now, number one, is Lord. Number two, is an, as an intercessor. The Bible says he makes intercession for the saints. Even if I prophesy, the Bible says it will end. Is that true? Even prophecies will end. Even tongues will end. So a day will come when God will look at us. And say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he won't call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the TV station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over 1 billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus you know that song I can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand 
and the Matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand here no crown no applause because you just said Jesus is coming the, the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn We must train believers to reign. We don't train believers to become our church members. Pastors, you don't train believers so that I can get church members. This member consciousness is destroying God's dominion mandate. God's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called Apostle Joshua Selman and every Sunday the man of God is here God's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance God begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains spheres of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we are going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of gucci designers louis vuitton and all of those things are only the fringe benefits are we together they are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective so you don't rejoice and say look i am enjoying why look at my house look at five cars look at ten shoes look at trips abroad and you put them like crowns whoever talks like that does not know god and does not understand the dominion mandate so my pride and your pride is not in our cars have the cars but that's not the pride the pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of two hundred and fifty thousand. that is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom your pride is that god gave me money and i worked the systems of the kingdom because i understood i would be a kingdom financier and i used that money i sponsored a tv station that now created a platform for people to receive jesus for people to rise for people to be built i built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for god i was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning it's a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men 
you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the, the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign i'll give us two prayer points before i begin to minister and i want us to please pray please pray hallelujah the first prayer is you are going to ask the lord listen carefully you're going to ask the lord to do something to your faith tonight i agree and i concur that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty you will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds how will god navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me are we together now this is where the spirit of faith comes the faith of god it says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith you're going to pray lord my faith is strong i believe you i believe you lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart tonight my faith is strong I believe that this is the night, the night when you transform, the night when you heal, the night when you deliver, the night when you turn my family around. Is someone praying? This is the night of your power, the night of your glory. Salatas. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory. Manifest your glory, O God. Father, help my own belief. I reject unbelief they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way can God make a way you are in ministry pray tonight is a night when you expand when you receive you are in business pray career pray you are in ministry pray for your family pray release your faith hallelujah listen prayer point number two the bible says ye have not because ye ask not you have not because you ask not he said ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete ask and you will receive 
He didn't say give us any day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Listen. When you come to God, it is not only important that you are aware of who he is, but you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for. Every time Jesus would meet with a blind man, a lame man, he would ask them, what do you want? That you are lame does not mean you want to stand you must be able to verbalize your requests you must be able to communicate listen i know that many of you have written your prayer request but i want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with god open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight lift your voice and pray someone is talking to the lord communicate your expectation When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. It says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Pala baruta shala bragada baladabo. Kranta lato shala gradira da baladaba. Someone is praying. Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will Please look up. It is not very difficult for a man's situation to change. God is not a magician. You will need to release your faith with understanding. You are before the God of all flesh, the doer, the walker of wonders. He's truly a miracle walker. Please believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. They are not a fabrication of human intelligence. No, no. God can work miracles. God does miracles. God delivers. God heals. God lifts. God transforms. God sets free. That's what his grace can do.
never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. I will never stay the same. I've touched your grace, my life is changed. I will never preach the same. I've touched your grace, my life is changed. I will never sing the same. I've touched your grace, my life is changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere of God's glory, listen, don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. Deliverance, when kept within the boundaries of the word of God, is powerful. Listen, because for many of us, let me tell you this, I submit to you. Listen, please don't inconvenience the guests. The space is all right. Just, just let them be, please. Listen, it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept that behind many tragedies are spirits. Please understand this. Behind many operations. Listen, when Jesus was going to calm the storm, every storm is made of two things, wind and water. You can see the water, but you cannot see the wind. Every storm is made of wind and water. There is no storm that is made of water alone. Jesus rebuked the water. He rebuked the wind and the water was still. There is no problem that is as a physical problem. There are spirits back of it. Whether it is financial, marital, spiritual. One of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital. No, sir. No, sir. There are spirits, more spirits than men on the earth. In one man, there was a legion. In one man. That's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits. 6,000 spirits in one man. Please listen to what I tell you. Your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around. And it, yes, there are principles here and there, but hear me, you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with. Are we together? There are, you can only judge situations by what has affected you. The one that has not affected you yet is there. But just because it has not happened yet, you may not know. So the secret is to address the spirits behind it. And not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there. Are we together? When we pray and minister to people, listen, we're, we're, a, very, we're a very balanced, Bible-based ministry. And let me tell you this by the Spirit of God. You do not help men when you leave the spirits that is back of their situations to go back with them. Now, I know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of Scripture. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking of liberty that is provable. That you can walk out before the service is done. You are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. You will never.
can be a man of God here greatly ministry you are anointed but things may not be working and you may just think the issue is just ministry ethics preaching well that is wonderful but let me tell you he said I desire once and again to come to you but Satan hindered us it is not only angels that are on assignment there are spirits on assignment there are demons on assignment there are powers that are on assignment Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 what seest thou four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Jerusalem and against Israel that these horns have made it that no man doth lift his head he said but I have sent four carpenters it's a reality Behind many families are spirits. Behind many medical reports are spirits. Behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits. Oh, my help has come. I shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago. He was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him. And while I was talking with him, as he entered my room, I saw a spirit just entering with him. And I looked at this dear gentleman, lovely, adorable, wonderful person. And I was politely going to hint him to say, sir, the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shot me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me. And said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices. They prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately, the chains fell. He said, all doors open. Not some. All doors. There was no use of key. The key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors opened. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray. by the power of the Holy Ghost tonight in the name of Jesus every spirit that is not of the Christ that is back of the situation around my life my family, my business my ministry pray I 
Hallelujah. You see, the power of God is already touching people. Listen, I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real. They are very, very real. Very real. Hallelujah. I have met so many spirits in my life. I've had so many encounters. That's not the basis of believing they are there. Scripture already tells us they are there. But let me tell you, they are there. And they are not there doing nothing. They are there causing pain. They are there manipulating families. They are there projecting things that are not of the Christ. But the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. I want to begin to pray now. Please listen. Whether or not you are an usher, I'd like you to help those under the anointing. We're going to do a lot of praying this night while I'm ministering. Um, please participate in the prayer. Prayer is very powerful when done with understanding. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people. Because there are real spirits behind people's situations. Hallelujah. First, I want you to bring out now. I'm not going to say anything. God is giving me an instruction. The power of God. I'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people. And these are spirits. And when that happens, the power of God will come upon them. I want you, whether outside or inside, just begin to bring them out here. We're going to pray and call on that name now. But the Lord is revealing to me. You will be very surprised. Some of you are standing for yourself, standing for your family. Please bring them out. This is the instruction God is giving. Except God is not God. There is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight. Please quickly just bring them out. I'm seeing the power of God. I don't know why God is giving me this instruction. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full, in full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. All right, we're ready to pray. Please lift your hands. Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. 
as you shout that name Jesus I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives over bodies over finances over destinies I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant it must go now at the count of three shout Jesus one two three I cause darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men to realities in the spirit. I come against it by the God of Jeshurun. Please bring them out. We release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. Was he praying? My God. Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. Now, I break those chains now over families, over businesses. I break those chains now. Separacatobadash, embrekete katabaratusia. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard. I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard. And the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave. The spirit of Hades. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare right now. Anyone covenanted to the power of the grave. The covenant with death. The covenant with the grave. By fire. May that fire fall on you now. Now, the covenant with the grave, the covenant with death, I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now, be liberated now, be free now. Haladuja <laughs> lihaskabaruda shalabanda sibaha. Rakatiza nehesala kutia. Bratuz kale maruda shaletia. Hallelujah. Now listen. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth fibroids, malignant growth, cancerous tissues. By the spirit of the living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those crows to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady, please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Growths. I'm still seeing growths coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone. Including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we 
will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in and we will never settle for less. We know there's more. Everyone here in front in this overflow and all the overflows I declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I command them to leave now pack your load and go at the count of three one two three go 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 out of their destinies now out of their lives forever out of their lives forever out of their homes forever of their bodies forever. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. We are still praying. Now, the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often. I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock. This is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move, you try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Now help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits, so that you cannot move. By this shout of Tehillah tonight, I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. I prophesy to you, move forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Stagnation comes to an end. Retro apakoto shala. Rekete kete kete. Parus kaba. Embregeto sheleto sabaka. Stagnation comes to an end. Retrogression comes to an end. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry, don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You are Bukola. Where are you coming from? Okay. Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. This my in the name of Jesus. This chain that I'm seeing be loose now in the name of Jesus. I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever in the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth, stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. This, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I would just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of first bank, you are on contract. Is that true? You're on contract. I'll still pray. This person I'm seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I'm seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. I want to pray. You are five of you, all alive, five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Contract staff with Sterling Bank. Wait. Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank. Yes. You will leave the bank soon. Amen. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now. But I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families. Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here. If it's not, I will pray for everybody. Five families. No, not one person has settled down. Ladies now. Don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray for extended periods. Your whole body starts itching you in a funny way. You know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug? Chloroquine. That's what happens to you. Like physically you begin to scratch your body. I must pray for you. Why is she here? Please. You are the one? Come. Madam, you too. Where are you coming from, ma? You are coming from Abuja. Come. We we'll attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? Okay. You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue.
I just saw fire, this row, right down, just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Our dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I curse the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Gombe State. You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I'd like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family now, God is breaking the plague of death. The power of God is coming. I don't know whether they are inside or outside. The plague of death is being broken right now. There is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death. Please come very quickly. I'll just touch you. I don't know why they are here, but we have to hurry up very quickly. Just a touch. Believe by faith. It is over. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sir, where are you coming from? I'm from Abuja. From Abuja? Yeah. What do you do, sir? I'm a minister. You are a minister of the gospel. I want to pray for you. Where, where, where are you coming from? Where do you come? Your state of origin? Akwaibo. Do you plan to go this Christmas? I'm not healthy. But I'm not healthy. Huh? I'm, I, I went for operation. It's not up to Listen, that's why I want to talk to you. I'm looking at this man, and I'm seeing you were supposed to have died. It's because of the intercession of men that you are alive. But then, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. We Anything God shows, we cancel. You get the point now? I'm seeing this man going in a bus, and I'm seeing a truck. I will not mention, I'm not being antagonistic, but the truck did not just shift your car. It climbed it, and everybody gone like that. You see, when God shows a thing, it is because of the strength he has put in his church. The power to change it completely. Are we together? I want to pray for you. You are very sick. And even the surgery has not solved the problem. Because what I'm seeing is still there. Please hold my hand, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, let this man not be given to the sword. Let him not be given to the grave. In the name of Jesus, I knock on the door of life and I speak to you, sir, by the power of the Holy Ghost be set free. I fortify you by the power of God's word and I declare death will be far from your dwelling. 
I speak that your going out is blessed and safe. Even your coming in is blessed and it is safe. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy continually. In Jesus' name I pray. Family of five, I need to pray. Hold my hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say In the name of Jesus I lose you and your siblings everything that is an orchestration of darkness i speak by the spirit of the living god you are loose now in the name of jesus i declare liberty i restore dignity and honor what is happening to you i'm seeing an angel of the lord going down here there's somebody the same thing is happening to someone there the same thing god is doing here god is doing to a lady there i declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus. Please come, sir. Let me just touch you by faith. In Jesus' name, be set free. Come. In Jesus' name, be set free. 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 There is someone, I think you are in ministry, you are in overflow one. The power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now. Please carry the person and bring the person here. We have to hurry up. I'm seeing the power of God touch the person. Hallelujah. I'm about to release that grace for speed again. Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala super I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners. Is, this, is a, this is a sign and a wonder. When God shows me a map, whenever I mention that location, anyone who is oppressed within that location, the power of God comes on them. Right now, I'm seeing the east. The east. I release that power now. The Lord is bringing liberation, eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra the power of God is touching that woman right now who is the person mommy you're welcome one to pray ah. not everything that looks like sickness is sickness there are many things that are projections of darkness are we together mommy let me pray for you in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God help her please in the name of Jesus I command that spirit now by the power of the Holy Ghost release our mother in the name of Jesus mommy I command that infirmity that plague and that yoke of darkness be gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let me just pray for these two people now. This lady, where is she coming from? Okay. There is, it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you. This lady, this fair lady I'm talking to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. May that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder. 
the Lord will show you things in your dreams he will show you things in visions please bring our mommy for me let me pray in the name of Jesus Christ um just touch her back for me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare right now this is not sickness this is the spirit of death I command the spirit of death hell and the grave to leave our mother right now by the power of the Holy Spirit complete emancipation complete emancipation in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here I don't know why but this is what he's saying just right here to the wall I'm seeing I'm seeing people's stomach the abdominal region I'm seeing things like chains just bring those under the anointing as I'm talking I'm seeing things like chains these are devils of infirmity the Lord is asking me to just stretch my hand please just allow me do my madness with God here and let the Lord set these people free please bring them out we're hurrying up now in the name of Jesus Karu Salatu Ziata Kariza Hashalam Barita Suba Haseketa Kradu Saleto Shala Saba Hasharata Siakata Rakata Barada Balakata Prata Sadabakato Shala Branda Skabariata I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact every planting that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ be free from it now yeah. hallelujah the power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies one of these ladies with the jerseys I'm seeing an anointing I know you are ministering but this is a miracle God is bringing for you for your family one of the ushering ladies I don't know whether they are inside outside I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies this is this is liberty that God is bringing right now Shalus Karita Hasubadia in the name of Jesus my dear look at me shame and reproach is living your life now shame and reproach is living your life now the garment of shame and reproach is living your life now why is this gentleman here you are not the anointing outside come hold my hands in the name of Jesus I pray for you come you lifting your hands run come your time of change has come where are you coming from it's, it's all right it's okay don't worry that's why you are here do you know me that's why I'm saying you just relax you were in the crowd and God brought you here do you know why God brought you here because things are not working at all in your family God needs to turn things around if I don't pray for you what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family but the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit let me pray for you hold my hands my dear what did you study Medical laboratory science. do you have a job I'm, I'm a copper in Ondo State I'm, work, I'm, I'm a copper I'm serving an NGO I want to pray for you the favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you you believe that in the name of Jesus I stay the power of evil over your family and in the name of Jesus I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor receive that grace in Jesus name we're going to pray for the sick shortly but I want to release this grace for speed please I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed if you don't have it you don't have it period there is a grace Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Sir 
Sarakin Sarakuna Dana Na Sarakin Sarakuna Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please, I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year, five years, and put in one month. Is it not written in your Bible that I will restore the years? God does not only restore things, he restores time. Whoever can restore time must be God himself. Are we together? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice, inside, outside, parushalata. I declare at the count of three, Father, let this grace for speed, restoration, the mystery that gains time. May that grace fall upon people within this auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four online. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. One, two, three, take that grace now. Speed, restoration. I prophesy, pursue, overtake without fail, recover. Pursue, overtake without fail, recover. In career, pursue. In marriage, pursue. In ministry, pursue. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Pursue, overtake, recover. Pursue, help that woman, please. Overtake, recover. Financially, pursue, overtake, recover. In your influence, pursue, overtake, recover. In your academics, I pray for students. Pursue, overtake, recover. Pursue, overtake, recover. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person by the person's self, mysteriously by the Spirit. There is a prophetic word, and this is how God told me it's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. Nah, nah, nah. It will happen by the spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know. Sarkin Sarakuna. There are three more 
more people. That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. Kai, the wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him. Limited him. Limited him. Please help them. Make sure they don't injure themselves. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Kashina, Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana. ones that have come out by the spirit I'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet I'm seeing their legs specifically their legs with chains I lose you now in the name of Jesus I release you to destiny I release you to destiny I release you to destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost no more delay no more retrogression by the spirit of the living God The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, my friend, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way. And I'm seeing a gate open before you, and night is at your back and day is in your front i prophesy to you what i'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy i take night behind you and i command your morning to stand before you i take night behind you and i command the sun to shine before you in the name of jesus christ Everyone lift your voice after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit. I am breaking limits. I am moving forward. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Breaking limits. In the name of Jesus, I make progress. Is someone praying? I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost. Breaking limits. Breaking limits. Hali shala hasaka tabra galoshia. Ekretus kaba shala da baruti. Empre koto shole bra hasada da baladaba. Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke, I just saw fire, just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people, moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you, the HICC pastor, a strong anointing shifting you by the spirit, step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, na na na. dimensions we want to pray for the sick now listen very carefully I believe in miracles there are people here who are standing 
trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies. Kai, there is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarabuna. Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change. Change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. But that every time, this is not a ritual, it's a revelation to come before the God who can answer. Listen. There are things here written that are death sentences. There are things written here that will take only God to provide a miracle for. There are things written here that are age-long captivities. Some of them even predate our coming to the earth. But there is a name that is above every other name. The Bible says, Wherefore God hath so highly exalted him and given him an office, a name, a title, the Bible says that at the mention of that name, everything in the earth, in heaven, under the earth, will bow every knee. And then every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father. I cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this. This is not a ritual. There is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here. And one more time, and the last time really for this year, I want us to agree in the next two, three minutes. Wherever you are, just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the Egyptian that I see today, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I will see them no more forever. Is someone praying? Shalakura Sibahaskadaba. Every evil report, orchestrations of darkness. If it had a beginning, tonight is the end. Pray. Paru Don't worry, for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to, just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray. Prato Shalakrodesi Gedebala.
name of Jesus, we decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Father, we bring before you every situation here. Marital situations, financial situations, spiritual situations, career situations. In the name of Jesus, we bring them under the covering of the blood. Every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain by the blood of the eternal covenant we nullify that access now in jesus name father by this prayer we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against god's people we declare them nullified forever I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord and I declare, receive strange testimonies. Before this year runs out, in the name of Jesus, let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies. Testimonies are largely answered through men hmm. when it leaves heaven most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form there are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form i'm praying every human agent that must partner with god partner with the systems of God to see to it that this request is granted. We compel them by the spirit to do so now. In the name of Jesus. Every death sentence written here. In the name of Jesus we cancel it now. Hallelujah. Let it be done. So shall it be. We establish it. In the name of Jesus. Now, we want to round up by prophesying over our lives. This for me, you've heard me say this is the best part of the service. Because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life. Please, I want you to agree with me. Every proclamation that will come, receive it by faith. Believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. The kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now. Strange encounters, revelations of heaven. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then And if our God is with us, every wall that stands before you and the next dimension, I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho, I command every wall, go down flat. Financial walls go down flat. Career walls go down flat. In the name of Jesus. A 
and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter I compel favor from them to you I compel favor from them to you in the name of Jesus There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable many people do not know what honor is the fortitude for preference there is an unction from god that fishes you out of the crowd places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you reward you recognize that which god has invested within you listen to me there are many gifted people the eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen. Is a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what he is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning. Leave your mind and trust God. It is within his power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now.
prepared blessings that take you to realms 10 years put in one month I release that grace upon you listen these graces are not some carnal show of wealth no they are time redemption systems understand what they are they seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom in the name of Jesus the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results receive that grace right now receive that grace in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here the sound of mourning the sound of pain and anguish by the spirit of the living God let it come to an end this night everything that has refused to walk in your life by the power of the highest I compel it to begin to walk now you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence In the name of Jesus, everyone here trusting God for a job, before this year runs out, may God give you a miracle job. Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough, we call upon the God of the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace. Hear me. Whoever ignores you will pay for it. Hear me. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. Let me say it again. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. I pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that would take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you i pray for every man and every woman of god here the errands and the horse that will hold your hands loyal men indeed may god give them to you Anyone here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod, I declare by the Spirit of God a restoration happens now. <laughs> Thou shalt not be afraid of the snare of the fowler, nor the noisome pestilence, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. It says none shall hurt you, but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. I pray for you. As a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler, may you escape from every evil. May you escape from every trap. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life. Go from glory to glory. The remaining weeks of this year, I'm speaking to you. May they be weeks of strange wonders. And finally, let me speak over your prayer life over your word study life whatever has stolen your joy whatever has stolen your fire whatever has stolen your passion whatever has stolen your focus in the name of Jesus by fire let it be restored tonight may the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life may you be a wonder first to yourself and then may you be a wonder to everyone around you. 
in the name of Jesus finally anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to see to it that you will not finish this year well to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family Gehazi came and met the woman and said it's all well it's all well with your household I pray for you because the Bible says to say to the righteous it shall be well therefore I speak over you it is well I declare over you all is well in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus for all of you who have traveled from far whether from another nation right down here from another city right down here you will go back with strange testimonies you will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here in the name of Jesus very quickly you are here under the sound of my voice please let's minimize movement and you're saying apostle I want you to give me an opportunity to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me. The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, I want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here. Sustain the boldness to come. Don't be ashamed. Let's celebrate them as they come, Koinonia. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Keep coming. Above him there's no other, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other, Jesus is the way. The Bible says, for God so loved you and me, he proved his love by giving, not taking giving his one and only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish is a law but have the way the life of god you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came i want you to know that there is a god who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say lord jesus please if you're joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God 
Amen. Keep your hands lifted while I pray for you. Father, thank you. You have brought this once by your spirit. You are able to save to the uttermost, scripture says. Thank you for drawing these ones. I decree and declare by the spirit of God that every legal stand that the devil has against them is nullified tonight by the blood. I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly there are a number of you. Um, there are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one, whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things with you and you'll be back. Is this the best you can do, Coin? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.